Last month, I made a video about an exploding can. It was an electromagnet that cut a can in half and it was like, and that was awesome. But what you guys were really interested in was this. It's a tiny little quarter. Look at the itty bitty George Washington. Yeah, I made it into an earring. We shrunk a quarter, or rather the performance group architect shrunk a quarter using an electromagnet, but you guys were really curious on how that worked. How do you do this? So I'm gonna get more into that, like an elf gets into the hobbit hole. Is there gonna I'll be a bang? I'll tell you, there's gonna be a bang. There's gonna be a bang? <laughs> there's going to be a bang. Oh jeez. Okay. It's ready. Oh, okay. it's ready. You guys ready for this? Everybody good? Whoa! That was a huge explosion. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, there he is. Ouch. Ouch. Is that a little hot? Look at that thing. That is how you shrink a head. Wouldn't it be cool if you could see the coin shrinking? Oh wait, the group HackerBot Labs is setting up a quarter between two clear dowels in this video with a phantom high-speed camera to capture the process at 180,000 frames per second. That's it. Here's a euro being shrunken. It's that fast. Only seven frames at 180,000 frames per second. Then the coil explodes. Another cool thing, you can actually do this with all different kinds of coins. It doesn't have to be a quarter. So I came across this website called capturedlightning.com, Bert's quarter shrinking and can crushing gallery. He's got all kinds of different coins, even the ones with the circle in the middle. So you can see what happens when you shrink all different kinds of currency from different countries. And with this one, you can really see that you're shrinking from the outside like you can see how the band of the outside of the coin is smashed inward and the coin gets a lot fatter to explain how that works I'm gonna talk again to Joe DePrima he's the member of the of Architac that you saw in the video and he's gonna tell us how it works it's plugged into the wall, which is coming in at 110 volts. First, it goes to the high voltage power supply. It's basically a transformer that you can put in a low voltage at a high current and you get a high voltage at a low current. So then this high voltage power supply charges up a capacitor, which is basically like a battery. But this one is huge. It weighs 160 pounds and gets charged up to... 8,000 volts. It's 8,000. Yeah, 8,000 volts. Wow, only 72 times higher than your wall electricity voltage. So then the operator triggers the switch to close. When the switch closes, two brass balls get really, really close to each other, but they don't actually touch. The voltage potential between them causes the air to break down, right? And the spark that forms between the two contacts is what actually completes the switch. Which, which to and me, it, like that's one of the craziest parts of this is that you, the switch is not actually two metal pieces touching. They just come close enough that they can break down the air. Yeah, exactly. But the reason that we do this is that if we actually touch those contacts together, they would just get hot and fuse together. What? Yeah, I mean, it would just be like using a welder to weld pieces of metal together. So the last step is a bleeder resistor connected to the capacitor in case it didn't discharge all the way, because for one... The work coil gets obliterated during the process. So the capacitor didn't discharge all the way. And so that bleeder resistor just makes sure that it is no longer a lethal situation. Disclaimer, this is not a how-to. There are so many safety features in addition to what I've included in this video, all the way down to safety switches, making sure that the steel blast chamber is on. So never ever try this at home. So now I'm gonna get into how physics does this because I love physics. So you've got your coil wrapped around a coin and then you run current through it and the current is key because current flowing through a wire produces a magnetic field. You get a magnetic field that's pretty much straight and parallel on the inside of that coil. And that's where our coin is. So the quarter will feel that magnetic field. We can get the computer to predict what the magnetic field is going to look like. You use the FEM software to model the coil and the coin. Yeah, in the initial condition. The reason why we use FEM uh, to figure this out is because, you know, pretty much every part in the system is measurable uh, except for the coin, mm -hmm. right? Because during operation, it's a very dangerous space. Yep. So according to this simulation, the highest uh, magnetic field density is 18.86 Tesla. Which is crazy. It's pretty high. That's a magnetic field two times stronger than what you'd need to make a frog levitate. And frogs aren't known for their magnetic properties. Now, one of the reasons that our coil doesn't make a stronger magnetic field is that it eventually explodes. But before it does so, the current in the coil ramps up to about 50,000 amps. 
50,000 amps is like lightning bolts. Typical lightning bolts are somewhere around 10,000 amps. That's an incredible amount of current. While the current is ramping up in the coil, that also means its magnetic field is ramping up. And the thing about increasing or just changing magnetic fields is that they can induce currents in nearby conductors. So some currents start to flow in the quarter. This is known as Faraday's law of induction. The current on the coin that I have calculated should be around 138 kiloamps. 130,000 amps? Whoa. The FEM simulation told us what the voltage across the coin should be. Oh, so interesting. We can, we can figure out the wattage right Whoa. just by saying volt what is the voltage in the coin so it says that our coin voltage is 192 volts so we can figure out the uh wattage by saying 138 kiloamps times 192. wow 26,496,000 watts <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of watts. 26 megawatts? That's like 2 million 10 watt light bulbs. You could say it like that. <laughs> you can say it's X number of toasters or television sets or <laughs> whatever. All right, so you've got this super strong current, this 100,000 amp current running through the quarter. And most of that current stays on the outside of the coin. Now, current or moving charges inside of a magnetic field are subject to a force. This is known as the Lorentz force. So you've got that magnetic field produced by the coil, and then you've got these moving charges in the coin, which, because of the direction of the magnetic field, feel a force inward, making the coin shrink. That's how it works. But there's one more side of this coin. Oh yes, I did. There's a current moving through the coil as well, but its current is flowing the opposite direction, so it's gonna feel a force in the opposite direction, which makes the coil explode outward in a super violent event with tons of copper shrapnel and, and vaporized metal, and it's just crazy town. So anyways, there are a number of groups that actually do this coin shrinking. There's a group called um, the National Mag Lab that does it and they make coins for kids. There's the group HackerBot Labs that let me use the slow motion footage of the coin shrinking. And then there's that website capturedlightning.com. Definitely worth checking out. So thank you so much for watching and learning all about how you use an electromagnet to shrink currency. And I hope you subscribe for more physics and as usual. Happy physicsing. One last shout out to Architac and especially Joe DePrima for having us at their warehouse and providing so much information for this video. You can check them out on Facebook at facebook.com slash Architac and check out their Tesla coils with Joe Hansen on It's Okay to Be Smart. Links in the description.